Poor camera. It's like, why did that math person have to pick me up? Um, what measurement would be 1.75 standard deviations above the mean? So now think about it. 1.75 standard deviations above the mean. So I want to start at the mean and go up or down. Uh -huh. So you want to start at the mean and you want to add how many what's? 1.75 standard deviations. So see how it's sort of the opposite of this work here? This is that they tell me the data point, I can see how many standard deviations away it is. This is that they tell me the number of standard deviations the way I want to be, I can figure out what that data point's got to be. This one is subtracting and dividing. This one is adding and multiplying, the, the exact opposite idea. And you get whatever the hell you get, I don't know. Sixty point six seven. I think so. Yes, that's what I have. Okay. Cool. So right now it's just a technical calculation step. Later in the semester, this idea is going to rule our life. Oh, that sounds exciting, Jeff. How far away from the mean I am will tell me the probability of that thing occurring. So if I take a sample of stuff, where should its average be? It should be close to the real mean. So if I take a sample and it's really far away from the real mean, that might tell me something, that maybe that the mean they thought it was isn't really the real mean, and maybe it's different. Because <clears throat> it's very unlikely to have that happen. That's way in our future. But for right now, it's just the technical, can you just calculate this shit for right now? Later we'll talk about what it means. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm going to give it to you basically exactly like this on the test, to be honest. Normally, my practice tests and my tests aren't exactly the same. I'm not going to give you exactly the same numbers and shit. But this actual test, it can't look that different from this because this first couple of chapters were very nuts and bolts and definitions and specific processes and stuff. Okay, okay. So look through that and let me know if you there's another one on there you want to kind of do together. Yeah. I have a question for the. Yeah. Uh, would you get the mean is 40? No, no, no. How many iterations away from the mean is 40? Yeah. So the 40 is the data point that I mentioned. I want to know how far away from the mean it is in terms of the standard deviation. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Um, if the mean of something was 20, would you say that if I got an 18, is that close to the mean? Some of you guys should be a little hesitant to answer because you can't tell me yet. What if the standard deviation is 2? Then how far away is 18 from 20? It's one step down, so that's pretty close. You guys still with me here a little bit? If the standard deviation is 2, the data on average go away 2 away from the mean. So that's 2 away, that's expected, that's a normal amount away. If the standard deviation was point frickin' 2, point 2, so on average everything gets point 2 away from the middle. Is 18 far away? Oh shit, yes. How far away would it be? 18 minus 20 divided by point 2. That's 10. It's, it's 10 steps away. Holy shit. That's a lot of steps. So let me, let me tell you this. This is going to come back later this semester, but I think this might help you out. Um, and thinking about what standard deviation tells us. So if I draw this picture, do you guys know what that is? What, do you, what, what kind of picture is that? Fat dude laying down. No. 
a bell curve. It's, a, it's also called a normal curve. Normal curve. And here's some facts about it real quick. So this would be the mean. Now help me out. What would be the z-score for the mean? How far away from the mean is the mean? Zero. Zero. So does that make sense when I do this? That means one step up and one step down. So if it's a normal curve, there will be 68% of the data inside one step away. So you go one step away, you catch 68% of the data. And think about why that makes sense. The standard deviation is how far data gets away on average. So one step away, you should catch a decent chunk of it, especially when I know it's normal and most of the data is in the middle. If I go two steps away, you catch freaking 95% of the data. So within two steps, there's 95, there's only 5% of the data you want to catch. So let me give you a specific example. The average height of men is 69 inches tall. Not centimeters. Oh, no. And the standard deviation is about, we'll say it's 2.5. I think it's 2.8. We'll just make it something easier. You got everybody kind of with me? Read a little bit with me? I just got here, so I'm sure. Oh, alright. So what's two steps up? Two steps would be how much? Five. So if you go five up, where do you end up? What height? 74 inches. If you go five, if you go two steps down, so that would be five down, you end up at 64 inches. So 95% of all American men are between 64 inches and 74 inches tall. So if I wanted only a few people to have to duck through a door, I could make it a little more than 74 inches tall, and most people would not have to duck. Do you understand? That's how I can use this information. How wide do I make an airplane seat so that only 3% of people will complain about it being too tight? Well, it depends on what the average hip width is for Americans, right? We are kind of the biggest one. Right, so, so do you understand what I'm saying? So I can kind of modify it based on what's happening to our backsides. I can, I can do it so I don't get so many complaints. I can say, how, what percentage of people do you want to complain? I can control that. If I know the mean and the standard deviation, I can control that. If we also became hobbits, we can make the doors shorter. We can make the ceiling shorter, right? I like it, I like it, maybe. Okay, that's, that's what we're gonna be doing a lot of directly us calculations in the future of this class. We are just at the bare bones level right now. But I really do want you to understand standard deviation and why when I said 10 steps away, that's huge because Two steps away, I've almost got all of it in there. Ten freaking steps, no way. Right? Who's up here? Who's up here? NBA people. Right? <laughs> Who's down here? Who's down there? The little people. Right? That's what they prefer to be called. Yes. You've seen the show on TLC? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you got it with me? So, this is... Uh, we would call these heights unusual. If I walked outside and I saw somebody taller than 74 inches tall, 74 inches tall is six foot two. So if you saw somebody like six foot eight inches, would you not kind of go, oh, or you know, just slightly, right? A little bit. You don't see that all the time, do you? Because of the fact that most people live in here. And if you saw somebody, you know, four foot tall, would you not go? Okay, not because you're being mean, not because of anything, because you don't see that all the time, right? It's unusual to see them. I like it, I like it, I like it. Okay, okay. So 10, 10 steps away is stupid unusual. It's like impossibly unusual. Your brain would blow up. This would be a person who's, you know, like 11 feet tall. That would be a definite, so I'll see you later. Okay, brain dead, you know, you know. 11 feet tall. This is this changes everything. What the hell? But not 11 feet. I think yeah, the tallest person was like eight or nine feet tall. Yeah. So 11 feet, even that person would go, oh, oh. <laughs> right? Okay, okay, okay. Enough of that. So have you guys looked at the rest of the test yet to see if anything is unusual? This first test is truly at the nuts and bolts level. 
Can you use the terminology correctly? Can you do the processes correctly? Can you use the formulas correctly? That kind of thing. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, not the corrected homework. I mean. Oh, corrected homework you can turn in any time. It's due the day of the final. The final. Yeah. And then you said. Um, Quiz correction, test correction corrections due the day of the next test. Okay, so that one's more. Get those ones done first. Yeah. Yeah. So you do homework corrections whenever you can. Okay. You keep correction. up with the new homework. Yeah. Right. You try to get the quiz and test corrections done. Okay. The other reason I do that is because test corrections are a big way to boost your grade. Because tests are heavily weighted, and I want to give you an accurate idea of what your, your grade is. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. But it's also, I had to either make the homework due later or the test corrections due later, just so, so you didn't have everything to do right before a test. So, so yeah. these corrections and all of the homework that we were supposed to have done for this upcoming Yes, so all the homework through section 2 7. <laughs> I don't know if I had the discussion, I know I've had the discussion about how important homework is, but have I had the discussion about <coughs> you making it your own? So, if you're at the point right now where you're in section 2 3, so you haven't done 2 4, 2 5, 2 6, 2 7, and you're like, well, I'll do that some. Much better than just not doing a couple sections because you try to do every single problem on side, do some out of every section so that you're ready for the test. You turn that stuff in, and I'll send it back saying, finish this, and you'd be like, whatever, Jeff. <laughs> I have to do what I've got to do to get ready for the test. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm not saying to you that I'm going to let you off on homework. I'm saying you make the homework work for you. That's what it's there for. So if you've got five jobs, and you've got three kids, and you've got craziness happening in your life, you've still got to find time to do enough of the homework to get practice for the test. You don't, don't do every single problem. I'm going to give it back and say finish this. But the tests are much more heavily weighted than the homework is. So basically you want to see that we did stuff and then we can go back and finish it. Yes. So you do what you got to do. If you got the time to do the, all the homework, do it. Beautiful. That's the best way to be. If you don't have time to do all the homework, do some from every section so you're not seeing a problem and not having a clue how to do it. That doesn't make any sense. I always hated it. And the student said, I didn't know how to do the last three problems. I didn't do the homework. I'm like, oh, shit. Come on. It's crazy. In the perfect world, I would just say, do as much homework as you need and not even grade homework. And I tried that one semester, and they all failed the first test because nobody did any homework. And I don't blame them. They're human. They're going to do what's due. So I stopped trying to do that immediately. All right. So you guys see anything else you want to focus on? So when we correct, we can just write it on the back. Totally. So just never change the original work. You could do another sheet of paper. You could do it right next to the problem. You could do it on the back of the quiz. Beautiful. And then just, you can just turn it in there yep. and then we'll back. Cool. Just make sure you turn the original in with the new corrections. Yes. So they're staying the length of stay at a hospital. So length of stay at a hospital and incurs occurrence of infection. Who's, who's having that happen? The patients. Uh, the patients. So the population, all the patients in all hospitals. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So I'll get the point off because you got the main idea of it. But it really is the patients that you're going to be talking to and looking at, not the hospitals. So. Okay. Yeah. You don't care about the architecture of the hospital or something. Cool. I'm going to just be asking questions about, like, the thing, just so I can not make the same mistakes in the future. Sure. So, like, this one is, I don't know, is it just, is it just because of the two words, or? Oh, the, so the problem is, when you say the treated AIDS patients, that would reference the sample. Okay. So you should say the average number of months all AIDS patients oh, would live. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that makes it sound, sound like you're referencing only the sample, and the parameter's going to reference. The whole population. Okay. Yep. So is this wrong? Oh, just telling you to put it in percentage form. Um, I mean, I didn't make points off because that's this is correct. Okay. It's just, and then it would be easier to put the percentages down. Okay. Just put it on. So if I wanted to, to fix this, um, can I just on the side of the screen? Sort of, 
throughout the frequency? I mean, if there's... Yeah, yeah. so it'll be interesting if you can see if you can make it match up to the heights you already have there. You know what I mean? It should be roughly the same picture, but the scale might be a little, a little bit different, so yeah, might as well just do it. Yeah. Definitely not. 